Hey guys, yes, I'm in pajama pants. <laughs> Today's video is going to be new puppy essentials. So I recently got a new puppy. His name is Miko. He is a 15 week, yeah, 15 weeks now. Um, Morky, so Maltese and New Yorkie. And I wanted to make a video basically on what I think are essentials to get for a new puppy. Here's what I think you need before you actually go and pick him up. So to start off, my first thing that I want to kind of say are the places that I like to get things from. So the first place would be Amazon, especially with the whole situation right now where you can't buy stuff in store. Um, the second place I got a lot of, or some of the stuff was PetSmart. And then the last place is a store. I know it's for Canadians. I'm not sure about the states and everywhere else, but um, it's called Homes Alive Pets. And that's actually where I got his food and some of his treats and his chews and stuff like that from. When I get into this, this isn't necessarily everything I have for him. It's just what I think you need up to getting him. Um, so his first thing is a crate. So you need a crate for your puppy. Um, try and get a crate that is big enough for them when they're full size. If you're getting a puppy that's really young, but it's gonna be a really big dog, you might need to start off with a crate that either has like a divider so you can make it half the size when they're puppy and then open it up when they're fully grown or just get them two crates, whatever ends up being cheaper. Um, I just got him actually the smallest size crate they have. I think it's an extra small. And like the first few weeks of having him, it was like way too big for him. And that's usually an issue because then they aren't afraid to pee or poo in their bed, which is basically the whole purpose of crate training. Basically, dogs are den animals and they won't actually pee or poo in their den. So if you get them a crate, they consider that as their bed and then they realize they need to go outside of it to pee or poo. Meaning, when they're in there, they won't pee or poo, so you know that you can take them out when they're not in there or take them to their place that they pee. Yeah, anyways, I thought that'd be an issue, but it wasn't. He actually didn't really have any accidents in there. I think he might have had one. I started that from day one, definitely recommend doing that. Second thing is a playpen. The playpen actually attaches to his crate. So I attach that and he kind of chills in there all day and then I take the crate in the bedroom at night. The next thing would be a bed. So I have a ton of beds for him, like maybe like three or four, including his crate. Um, but in his crate, I actually just have a blanket because sometimes he likes to sleep on the flat, like hard floor. So I kind of split it up half and half and then he can go on whatever side he feels like. It depends on your puppies. Some puppies like just plain floor, some puppies like bedding. Can you hear my boyfriend singing in the background? Babe, babe, Clayton. I don't know if he's pretending he can't hear me or if he has his AirPods in. Babe. Okay, anyways. I also have like a, like a thing that's like a mat almost and it goes into his bed, but he didn't like that either. So that's just kind of another one of his like little, I actually have that in like the last section of this little Ikea cabinet thing. I can't even explain it. If you follow me on Instagram, then I'm talking about the next thing. A blanket, as I said before, it's nice to bring him home in. It's also just nice to have to bring him wherever you go to another place and you want to like just bring something of his, bring some toys, his food, his water, but also the blanket. Just comforting and the food. So they started him off at his breeder on um, a brand called Wellness. After doing some research, I kind of wanted to change his food to something that I feel like is a little bit better. Um, so rather than kibble, it's actually called like air dried food. So rather than baking it, they air dry it, which is a lot better. It keeps the nutrient, the nutrition in the food. So the brand that I get his food from is called Carnivore. I know that it's made and sold in Toronto, so I'm not sure if you can get that in other places. But honestly, just search up like top food in and then your area or whatever and maybe you can even get it there but one that i feed him is the fish and the chicken so it's two separate bags the fish is like an easy to chew one and then the chicken is harder so i mix them just so that he can digest it easier because he still has puppy teeth the next thing that i kind of want to mention are chews he loves sweet potato fries um i think that the bag that i actually got was from a pup box which is a monthly subscription you can get for a puppy which i actually got <laughs> in replacement of my boxy germ, but they're basically just sweet potato fries. It's just only the one ingredient. There's no like salt or anything like that. Yeah, those take a while for him to chew on and they're good for him. The next thing would be Himalayan chews, which is basically like cheese. I'll link those down below or put it on the screen as well. It's take him forever to eat. The last thing food-wise that I want to mention are his treats. When I first got him, he had these treats that were kind of like soft. And then after reading the ingredients, I found that they weren't really good for him. They had a lot of Ingredients I couldn't read, so I figured that probably wasn't the best. I actually started giving him these trainer treats. They're super tiny, and they're also really low in calories, and um, only one ingredient. They're just beef liver, like dried beef liver, and he's obsessed with them, so I can give him a lot, and it won't be bad for him or 
high in calories, make him sick or anything like that. Definitely recommend those for training, especially. Next thing would be toys. So you definitely want to get them a plush sort of toy, meaning, I'm sorry if you take away your toy for a second. Drop it. Drop it. Good boy. Um, so something like this, something that's just like fabric -y. This one's crinkly, which he loves. And then really? another, yeah. Yeah, you were singing and shit, and I was yelling at you, being like, babe, babe, I thought babe. you were on FaceTime. I feel like a bad boyfriend. Like, oh, like, no, it's okay. I thought you were going to do this later, and I was just going to make sure I was super quiet. No, you were literally bolting, and I was like, is he ignoring me? Or like, I'm no, literally yelling at you. I'm leaving that earphones. in the video, like 100%. I was just saying my earphones. Just so the next thing that I would say you need are these types of uh -huh. these type of toys. These are good for puppies when they're teething. Another type of toys that's good are tug-of-war toys so that you can play with them. Another thing, I don't want to pull it out of his mouth because I feel bad, but basically if you wet a small cloth and put it in the freezer, it'll really help their teeth. They'll chew on it until it basically is no longer wet or frozen anymore. And then he, he just loves it. He literally carries it around with him. Another toy I would say are interactive toys. So for example, like Kongs and things like that. You can stuff them with his kibble or his food, treats. Um, I do Greek yogurt. Just make sure that it's plain Greek yogurt with no sugar and also no like fake sweetener because that's a lot of the time toxic to dogs. So make sure that the ingredients are really low. Another thing is peanut butter. Um, there's a certain type of peanut butter you can get for dogs that don't have like the salt and the sugar and all that other stuff. I'll link that also. Everything will be linked down below. So, so for accessories wise, you're gonna need to get a collar, a harness and a leash. I got a leash that was pretty short just because I want him to learn that he needs to walk close to me. Another thing that I know a lot of people um, get are those like retractable leashes. Those are actually kind of dangerous from what I've heard. And they also kind of teach your dog that they can pull and that they don't need to walk close to you and all that type of thing. So um, I personally just like the simple short leash. I think the one I have is maybe like five feet or something like that. Harness wise, it's just better for teaching them how to walk properly on a leash. Um, he actually got a harness, but he can slip out of it, like his arms. So I've ordered him a new one and hopefully it'll be here soon. This thing would be poop bags and a poop bag holder. So the poop bag holder, you kind of just attach to the leash. And then, yeah, the poop bags just go in the poop bag holder. And you pick up the poop and you throw out the bag. There's that. Personally, have him pee pad trained or I'm in the process of having him pee pad trained. He still has some accidents because he's only like three months, but He's getting actually pretty good at it. Um, I did pee pie training just because when I got him, he could only hold his bladder for literally like an hour because he's really tiny and he's also really young. Um, the smaller the dog and the younger the dog, obviously the smaller the bladder is, so the less they can hold their pee. If you can, just go straight to doing the outdoor pee potty training. Um, so yeah, pee pads and then the pee pad holder. He is one of those dogs that tries to chew up his pee pad and like drag it everywhere and like claw at it so i have a pee pad holder to try and hold it down although he still manages to get it up so yeah next thing i would recommend are puppy wipes these are basically just like baby wipes but for puppies I recommend getting wipes that are like made for puppies because they have the ingredients that aren't going to hurt their skin and their fur and everything yeah they're good for just in between baths you can't wash your dog super often so it's good to keep them nice and clean, wipe down their paws after a walk, that type of thing. Another thing would be shampoo. I'll list the shampoo that I also have down below. It's the Bird's Bees one. It's like the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. He only gets a bath about once a month. I'm hopefully going to be taking him to the groomers once everything's opened up. But for now, I have been grooming him at home. So I did get this grooming kit. Oh my god, he's trying to chew my pillow. No, Miko, leave it. Miko, leave it. Good boy. Good boy. I have a grooming kit for him, I'll link that down below. It comes with a razor, scissors, a comb, nail clippers, all that sort of thing. Um, watch videos on doing that. Don't just go and like try it yourself. Definitely watch some YouTube videos and figure out how to do it properly because you can make your dog's nails bleed if you go too deep on their nails, as well as you don't want your dog to look ugly if you give them a bad haircut. So yeah, watch videos. I've watched a ton and I'm still really scared when I do it. Next thing would be a toothbrush and toothpaste. One he likes is actually chicken flavored. He goes crazy for it. He thinks it's a treat. Next thing would be um, back to the whole pee pad thing, pee spray. Your dog is definitely gonna have accents in the house and you need to get a spray that has like an enzyme cleaner in it because they can still smell their scent and they'll go in the same spot because of it. Next thing you'd need are food bowls. Make sure that you get one that's angled correctly with the size of your dog. So you don't want them to be like hunching over super like hard to reach their food if that makes sense. They kind of need to be like aligned with their food. So they have like bowl holders and stuff like that. Just make sure you get that accurately. You can research more into that. 
um, based on your dog size. Next thing would be a car seat. This isn't necessarily mandatory, but I felt like it was. It's one, just easier to teach your dog from day one to sit in the back seat, have his own spot and not be in your lap and climbing all over the car and everything like that. As well as it's safer if you're to get in an accident, um, the dog's not being held in by your arms or just nothing. It actually has a seatbelt that hooks onto either their collar or their harness. I would say I recommend doing the harness because if it's their neck, then it's pulling the back of their neck, which isn't really any better than not having a seatbelt on at all. So definitely attached to their harness so it holds them back and like kind of pulls them back. But yeah, that is all of my puppy essentials. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. He's currently trying to take his pee pad out. Um, if you're getting a puppy soon, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Take a lot of pictures, be patient, do a lot of research on YouTube and stuff like that with training because if you train them when they're young, you can just enjoy them when they're older. And